Cool. Um, well, hello everyone. Uh, so I went to Cabrillo and at my time at Cabrillo, I just really just kind of dove into whatever I could get involved with. And really that was to try and get some engineering experience, try and um, have just college experiences and more importantly to network. Um, like where I've gotten to now, I can say has been mainly because of my networking and being able to connect with different people. Um, I transferred to San Jose State and um, while I was there, I was a part of, they have their engineering abroad program as well. So I did that there. Um, I guess career wise, while I was at Cabrillo, I was working at the Monterey One uh, Wastewater Treatment Plant Marina. And when I transferred to San Jose State, I was working for the County of Santa Cruz in Public Works under road design. Um, I also had like second jobs to, you know, make ends meet. Um, and I'm now in Davis, just living my life. <laughs> Can you, you mentioned, um, Kalika, that networking was a big part of um, what you took away from Cabrillo. And I know that um, some of the students had explored uh, or mentioned networking as something they were interested to learn could be done virtually. Could you talk about some of the ways you networked? Uh, well, this was all pre-COVID. <laughs> My first experience with networking was actually through the engineering broad program. Joanne set up these um, presentations at different organizations. And in these organizations, you have the opportunity to meet with other working professional engineers in your local area. And so I found that to be very valuable. And from that, I ended up joining one of the organizations, APWA, it's the American Public Works Association. And most organizations tend to have a student chapter on campus or a um, young professionals type of subgroup that's geared more towards young professionals just starting and students. Um, and you can find that, um, Kind of just all around i guess through school you'll meet people who are like oh yeah and um at san jose state for civils asce is a huge organization and they're super heavily involved in making sure that their students graduate being able to connect them with potential mentors different internship opportunities even scholarships um and yeah i i will admit i'm not uh, the most social, I guess. I'm a little introverted. Um, and I have a couple of other friends who are kind of like, oh, really shy. I, I, I've never done any type of engineering thing. I don't know what to talk about with these people. And really, everyone is understanding that you're a student, you're just starting out, and they're really excited to help you just grow as an engineer, both academically and professionally. Um, so just pushing yourself through to try and talk to people, just ask them, what is the project that you're working on? Oh, I saw you gave this presentation on this certain topic tonight. Like, tell me a little bit about that. And for sure have a genuine interest in the conversation you're having. That's stuff yeah. you can tell right away. <laughs> um, what would, you've been to Cabrillo, you've gone through the transfer process. What advice do you have for uh, these students who are literally in the some of the first semester at Cabrillo. When Cabrillo, there is no place like Cabrillo. Um, everyone, well, from when I was going there, it was super tight knit. The STEM center was new. Everyone was excited. And when you transfer, you may or you may not go through this period of, I guess, grieving because um, it is different. And when you transfer to the four-year universities, sometimes it's a little more self-driven and you have to be the one to put yourself out there, to ask your professors for help, 
to join an organization or a student club. Um, it, it, transferring really is what you make of it. Okay, great. Um, I want to let everyone know that they can um, ask questions themselves or type into the chat, and I'm happy to read those questions off. Um, can you talk about some of the work that you've done? You mentioned you work at a APWA. Like, what was some of the some of, what was some of the favorite stuff that you had done while you were working at those organizations? Um. So, well, do, do you mean work or through like the because APWA is an organization? And oh, so I thought you said you joined a. Um, you went to work there. Sorry, I got confused. Um, so I was working at the county of Santa Cruz. That's it. Okay. And yeah. um, when you're looking for internships and for jobs, whether it's the exact job description that you're looking for, or whether it's something that you're thinking, I don't know if I really want to do this, apply. Because when I first started at the county, I applied for a position that was um, described as an engineering aid position. And when I went to the interview, it actually wasn't engineering at all. It had to do with a program um, for sustainability. And so went in, had nothing to do with engineering. And then 2017 came with the winter storms and it wiped out a lot of our roads in Santa Cruz County. And through that, um, I had already been there for about three months, and so I had talked to kind of everyone around and was getting familiar with people, and the road design crew knew that I had an engineering background and that I, that's what I was going to school for. So they were able to pull me from what I was doing and put me into this engineering aid position where that really kind of... Um, I was working on filling out federal forms for Caltrans and for FEMA to make sure that we got funding for these um, projects to, to make our roads better. <laughs> um, I learned the process of proposals. I was writing um, requests for authorization packages. Wow. And so it's, it's a lot of kind of behind the scenes paperwork that is part of engineering. Like when I first started engineering, I thought, okay, engineering is all about design because you're taking these classes, you're learning about all these design um, techniques and kind of different um, basic engineering principles that have to go into a design. When you get into the workforce, if you're not a design person, don't worry, there's, there's other engineering positions that don't have to do with design. The longer I was there, um, the last couple months that I was at the county, they actually gave me my own project, a small project, but my own project where I did get to work on design and work on the project from start to finish. Wow. And um, well, that's really great. So how long were you there? I was there for about three years. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So what are you doing now? Uh, <laughs> plans now? Uh, now, uh, I'm actually not working in engineering. I moved up to Davis with my boyfriend, who is going for his PhD in mechanical engineering. Oh. So um, we moved up here, and I'm working at a flower shop as a delivery driver, just kind of taking a break and uh, working on my mental health and just getting settled. Do you plan to do a graduate degree or are you looking for full-time work in engineering still? I'm thinking about graduate school. I know um, I still have one more design class that I need to finish. And so once this class is over, I'll start looking for full-time engineering positions. And um, as far as grad school, I still kind of toss between do I want to get a master's in civil engineering or do I want to get um, a mass, like an MBA in business admin? Just because oh, trying to figure out what exactly I want to do with my career in the long run. Business is a very popular master's to get for engineers, especially if they want to get into 
management positions and not necessarily into design. That's a really interesting take because I think there would be a lot of students here who may feel the same way, that they want to do a business degree after engineering. Mm -hmm. Have you looked into programs that might be good for that? Uh, I was looking at San Jose State, um, but I'm not there anymore. So uh, yeah, I hear Sacramento State has a really good MBA program, um, but it's still something I need to look more into. Okay, so are you still a student at San Jose State? I'm still a student with my last design class. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's great. So how, when were you at Cabrillo? When did you leave Cabrillo? I was at Cabrillo. I was at Cabrillo for, a, I think, eight years. Oh, wow. I, I was there for a really long time. I hope you took advantage of everything Cabrillo has to offer in that time. I tried, yeah. What was your favorite thing at Cabrillo so that these students can go seek it out? Mm, really, I have to say the engineering abroad. Oh, the engineering abroad. The engineering um, abroad, that's great. So you guys went to Guatemala. And what did you work on? What was your project there? Um, well, just before I get into that, so Clayton, my undergrad is in civil engineering. And some people, they get an emphasis whether it be geotech, water resources, environmental, transportation, um, or structural. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, I actually didn't have an emphasis. It was just purely civil engineering for my undergrad. Mm -hmm. um, and so for the engineering abroad program, we were the second group to go there. And our year, we had three different projects. And so the project that I was a part of was connecting their already existing um, already existing kind of tank to just digging out that line to lay down the piping to connect it to the other tanks. For water or sewage or? It was a water, yeah, it was a rainwater catchment system. Oh, rainwater catchment system. Oh, mm -hmm. very cool. How long were you there? A week? We were there for two weeks. Okay. And yeah. how do how do how do these students get involved in engineering abroad? Is there a class they have to take? So engineering abroad is a class and a program. You sign up for your class where you um sorry, in the fall where you have like preliminary meetings weekly and then you go on your two week program and when you come back when you come back, that's when the real fun begins, personally, I thought, because you focus more on, I guess, kind of like the business side and like the formality of creating presentations and presenting your work to different organizations. Oh, so um, so is it a year-long program, essentially, to be in the engineering abroad? Program, but the, the part where you're actually in Guatemala is, it's two weeks. Yeah. And so... Wow. It, you do have to apply for it. And this is the same thing like um, the engineering abroad over at San Jose State. Most engineering abroad programs you have to apply for and you'll go through an interview process and they'll select who they want. Did you do the engineering abroad at San Jose State as well? Yes. So where did you? It was called the Global Technology Institute I think, yeah, um, and so that one, the, that one's a little different just because it was an international program. So it's, um, whereas like Cabrillo, it's just Cabrillo students and you all go there together, you learn together, you come back. San Jose State, it's a part of an international program. So there's two schools from the USA, but there's 11 other countries who are all part of this program. And so the students who are selected to be a part of that program, they, um, they meet up our year. It was in Taiwan. And what did you do in Taiwan? What was your project? It's split up between research and business. Um, I went down the business route and we meet with different um, kind of like entrepreneurs and we learn the business model and how to start a business from start to finish. 
That is so cool. Did these trips cost you money or did you, or were they spo sponsored, I guess? So at Cabrillo, um, Cabrillo was really great because there's different opportunities for you to fundraise and Joanne is like busting her ass trying to get all of these funds from different local companies. Sorry, excuse my language. Um, and, uh, and so uh, most of the trip is funded um, for a lot of the big ticket items. When our year went, we were responsible for covering our airfare and that we were able to raise as a group through fundraising, through like small little raffles and stuff throughout the school. How about to Taiwan? Did you have to pay for? Uh, Taiwan, I, yeah, we did have to pay for Taiwan. Okay, so not only do you have to apply, but you also have to raise your own money to send yourself there too, if you get in. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm like, I can't remember if we paid for Taiwan or not. I know that they did set up, in both occasions, um, room and board was set up and uh, meals were also included as well in like okay. your whatever you pay for. So at San Jose State, for all the students who are transferring, does that opportunity happen in your last year or because you get there sort of as a junior, right? So do you apply during your junior and go as your senior? And really you can apply either either way. It just, um, they just wanna make sure that you're gonna be there full time as a student this semester coming back from your- Ah, that's the requirement, okay. Mm -hmm. Very cool experiences that you've had. Yeah. Um, does anyone have questions for Kalika that they want to ask? Is there uh, some kind of grant for the Guatemala trip? What you mean in addition to the fundraising? Um, no, like, I don't know, a, like, a grant. I don't know any other word for it. Uh, um, I think she said that they had to raise their own money. For that. Yeah, Cabrillo does um, provide funding to cover a lot of the cost, but students were expected to fundraise um, or there is some, the year coming back, the next year's group, there's some people who didn't take part in the like team fundraising and decided, you know, I don't have time for that. I'm going to work my job full time and just save my money. So if you have a job where you can save enough for your own portion of it you can do that if you don't you can also fundraise oh i see so you fund they have like uh, some kind of program for the fundraising so you can pay your, your own way like work for it yes in um okay. there's the engineering abroad program and then there's the engineering abroad club and so when you're in the program they encourage you to be a part of the club because the club is really the entity that helps you fundraise for your portion of the trip. Um, I think we have one last question um, because then our next speaker has joined us as well. And I think the question was on these trips that you took for engineering abroad, were you able to go out and see any of the sites while you were there or were you working the whole time? Um, so for the engineering abroad program at Cabrillo, it, it was a pretty full day. We were able to go and sightsee on our own, um, but that changes from year to year. There was other years where you didn't have much free time um, and you kind of just stayed together as a group sightseeing. Um, yeah. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much, Kalika, for being yeah. here and sharing your experiences with us. It was really great to meet you. Yeah. Good luck with um, your finishing up your degree. It's so exciting. If anyone, I just wanted to. Just, yeah, yeah, please. Um, if anyone wanted to get a hold of me, ask any more questions, my contact information, Kalika Tedias at Gmail. If you looked at my LinkedIn, here's my random picture that's there. Um, but yeah, 
I'll, I'll share this with you pretty so that you can pass it along. Yeah, um, or you could paste it into the chat. That would be great if you just paste your email address or your LinkedIn um, connector to the, into the chat. Great, thank you. I want to I want to ask one last question because it just came to mind. Is that okay? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so LinkedIn is that still a thing? Is that important for an uh, engineering professional or any professional, or is that just kind of hype? Because I don't know anybody with a LinkedIn really. It 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 depends. Have a okay. basic LinkedIn set up already, like at least have one set up whether you use it or not. I don't necessarily use that to network. Some people all about it and the people who are all about it, they can find my LinkedIn. Okay. okay. All right, thank you, Kalika. Um, and I think, yeah, our next speaker who's joined us, Dave Campbell, may wanna expand upon the LinkedIn question. And I certainly am willing to give my two cents at the very end of class today as well on that. 